Welcome back, sweet dreamers, to the adventures of Peter Pan by Pumpkin Stories. In this series, we will read through the whole book by James Matthew Barry. Now, relax and get ready to dive back into Neverland. The romp had ended with the appearance of Naina and most like unlikely Mr. Darling collided against her, covering his trousers with hairs. They were not only new trousers, but they were the first he had ever had with braid on them, and he had had to bite his lip to prevent the tears coming. Of course, Mrs. Darling brushed him, but he began to talk again about its being a mistake to have a dog for a nurse. George, Nana is a treasure. No doubt, but I have an uneasy feeling at times that she looks upon the children as puppies. Oh no, dear one, I feel sure she knows they have souls. I wonder, Mr. Darling said thoughtfully, I wonder. It was an opportunity, his wife felt, for telling him about the boy. At first he pooh-poohed the story, but he became thoughtful when, we, when she showed him the shadow. It is Sir uh, Nobody I know, he said, examining it carefully, but it does look a scoundrel. We were still discussing it, you remember? said Mr. Darling, when Nina came in with Michael's medicine. You will never carry the bottle in your mouth again, Nina, and it is all my fault. Strong man though he was, there is no doubt that he had uh, behaved rather foolishly over the medicine. If he had a weakness, it was for thinking that all his life he had taken medicine boldly, and so now, when Michael touched the spoon in Nina's mouth, he had said reprovingly, Be a man, Michael. Won't, won't, Michael cried nottingly. Mr. Darling left the room to get a chocolate for him. And Mr. Darling thought he sh this showed want of firmness. Mother, don't pamper him, he called after her. Michael, when I was your age, I took medicine without a murmur. I said, thank you, kind parents, for giving me bottles to make me well. He really thought this was true, and Wendy, who was now in her nightgown, believed it also, and she said to encourage Michael, that medicine you sometimes take, father, is much nastier, isn't it? Even so much nastier, Mr. Darling said bravely, and I would take it now as an example to you, Michael, if I hadn't lost the bottle. He had not exactly lost it. He had climbed in the dead of night to the top of the wardrobe and hidden it there. What he did not know was that the faithful Lisa had found it and put it back on his washstand. I know where it is, father, Wendy cried, always glad to be of service. I'll bring it. And she was off before he could stop her. Immediately, his spirit sank in the strangest way. John, he said, shuddering, it's most beastly stuff. It's that nasty, sticky, sweet kind. It will soon be over, father, John said cheerily. And then in rushed Wendy with the medicine in a glass. I have been as quick as I could, she panted. You have been wonderfully quick, her father retorted with a vindictive politeness that was quite thrown away upon her. Michael first, he said doggedly. Father first, said Michael, who was of a suspicious nature. 
I shall be sick, you know, Mr. Darling said threateningly. Come on, father, said John. Hold your tongue, John, his father rubbed out. Wendy was quite puzzled. I thought you took it quite easily, father. That is not the point, he retorted. The point is that there is more in my glass than in Michael's spoon. His proud heart was nearly bursting. And it isn't fair. I would say it, though it were with my last breath. It isn't fair. Father, I am waiting, said Michael coldly. It's all very well to say you are waiting. So am I waiting? Father's a cowardly custard. So you are a cowardly custard. I am not frightened, neither am I frightened. Well then, take it. Well then, you take it. Wendy had a splendid idea. Why not both take it at the same time? Certainly, said Mr. Darling. Are you ready, Michael? Wendy gave the words. One, two, three, and Michael took his medicine. But Mr. Darling slipped his behind his back. There was a yell of rage from Michael and... Oh, father! Wendy exclaimed. What do you mean by oh, father? Mr. Darling demanded. Stop that row, Michael. I meant to take it to take mine, but I, uh, I missed it. It was dreadful, the way all the three were looking at him, just as if they did not admire him. Look here, all of you, he said and threateningly, as soon as Naina had gone into the bathroom. I have just thought of a splendid joke. I shall pour my medicine into Naina's bowl, and she will drink it, thinking it is milk. It was the color of the milk, but the children did not have their father's sense of humor, and they looked at him reproachfully as he poured the medicine into Naina's bowl. What fun, he said doubtfully, and they did not dare expose him when Mrs. Darling and Nina returned. Nina, good dog, he said, patting her. I have put a little milk into your bowl, Nina. Nina wagged her tail, ran to the medicine and began lapping it. Then she gave Mr. Darling such a look, not uh, an angry look. She showed him the great red tear that makes us so sorry for noble dogs and crept it into her kennel. Mr. Darling was frightfully ashamed of himself, but he would not give in. In a horrid silence, Mrs. Darling smelt the bowl. Oh, George, she said, it's your medicine. It was only a joke, he roared, while she comforted her boys and Wendy hugged Nana. Much good, he said bitterly, my wearing myself to the bone trying to be fun in this house. And still, Wendy hugged Nana. That's right, he shouted. Coddle her. Nobody coddles me. Oh dear, no. I am only the breadwinner. Why should I be coddled? Huh? Why, why, why? George, Mrs. Darling entreated him. Not so loud. The servants will hear you. Somehow, they had got into the way of calling Lisa, the servants. Let them, he answered recklessly. Bring in the whole world but I refuse to allow that dog to lord it in my nursery for an hour longer. The ch children wept, and Nana ran to him beseechingly, but he waved her back. He felt he was a strong man again. In vain, in vain, he cried, 
the proper place for you is the yard, and there you go to be tied up this is instant. George, George, Mrs. Darling whispered, remember what I told you about that boy? Alas, he would not listen. He was determined to show who was master in the house, and when commands would not draw Nina from the kennel, he lured her out of it w with hornet words, and seizing her roughly, dragged her from the nursery. He was ashamed of himself, and yet he did it. It was all owing to his too affectionate nature, with craved for admiration. When he had tied her up in the backyard, the wretched father went and sat in the passage, with his knuckles to his eyes. In the meantime, Mrs. Darling had put the children to bed in unwanted silence and lit their night lights. They could hear Nina barking, and John whimpered. It, it is because he is chaining her up in the yard. But Wendy was wiser. That is not Nina as an unhappy bark, she said, little guessing what was about to happen. That is her bark when she smells danger. Danger? Are you sure, Wendy? Oh, yes. Mrs. Darling quivered and went to the window. It was securely fastened. She looked out and the night was peppered with stars. They were crowding round the house as if curious to see what was to take place there. But she did not notice this, nor that one or two of the smaller ones winked at her. Yet a nameless fear clutched at her heart and made her cry. Oh, how I wish that I wasn't going to a party tonight. Even Michael, already half asleep, knew that she was perturbed, and he asked, Can anything harm us, mother, after the night lights are lit? Nothing precious, she said. They are the eyes a mother leaves behind her to guard her children. She went from bed to bed, singing enchantments over them, and little Michael flung his arms round her. Mother, he cried, I'm glad of you. They were the last words she was to hear from him for a long time. Number 27 was only a few yards distant, but there had been a slight full of snow, and father and mother darling picked their way over it deftly not to soil their shoes. They were already the only persons in the street, and all the stars were watching them. Stars are beautiful, but uh, they may not take an active part in anything. They must just look on forever. It's the punishment put on them for something they did so long ago that no star now knows what it was. So. The older ones had become glassy-eyed and seldom speak. Winking is the star language. But the little ones still wonder. They are not really friendly to Peter, who had a mischievous way of stealing behind them and trying to blow them out. But they are so fond of fun that they were on his side tonight. And anxious to get the grown-ups out of the way, so as soon as the door of 27 closed on Miss and Mr. Darling, there was a commotion in the firmament, and the smallest of all the stars in the Milky Way screamed out, No! Peter! Hope you enjoyed this part. See you all on the next. And until then, good night and sweet dreams by Pumpkin Stories. <laughs>